So I am Darlene Mahoney. I'm with SeniorLivingGuide.com. I am the National Digital Sales Director. Um, I work um, on the .com side of Senior Living Guide, which is a great resource for seniors and their families and a great opportunity for um, anyone that wants to reach those seniors and their caregivers and for senior resources or if they work in home health or in the senior industry for housing at all to reach those seniors because that's what we do. We connect them um, in somewhat of a very organic way. So that's what I do. Um, check out our website um, and I'll be happy to provide you on how you can do that with us and become a partner with SeniorLivingGuide.com. Um, we also have hospital directories in 45 um, different markets. It's a great opportunity to look at some of that as well. And then we have um, statewide print publications in Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. So we have uh, quite a bit of reach. And then we also have a senior and caregiver resource podcast. Um, which is clearly available anywhere that you can access podcasts um, utilizing Spotify or anything else like that. So it's really um, a great opportunity to organically meet and talk to seniors and their families um, in a completely different way. And we actually had Andrew on a podcast where he was able to do that, um, speaking directly to seniors and their families about the long distance medical transportation. So you might want to check that out after the webinar as well. So that's enough about me. Um, so I'm going to share, I'm going to let Andrew jump on um, in just a second. But the housekeeping notes I did want to notate is that we are recording this. So the upside to this is afterwards, I will um, send this over to you in a YouTube link um, so that you can also share it because we, you know, I always say sharing is caring. Um, and you can also continue to view it if you miss something um, during the presentation itself. Um, and then if Andrew would like to share the slides, he's welcome to do that as well. That's something I'll let him decide. Um, so the name of the podcast is um, Getting You There. I'll, have to, I'll I will share that when I send the email. I think it's called Getting You, We'll Get You There. I think it's called We'll Get You There. Um, it's a fun name, um, but I'll send it out to you. I'm trying to recall what we, what we uh, named the title of the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we will also share out Andrew's contact information um, after we finish the webinar. So that will probably be within the next 24 to 48 hours that you'll get all that information. Um, we will also be taking questions um, from this webinar. However, we'll take them at the very end of the webinar, but please do not hesitate to um, put those right in this chat box. Um, during the webinar, because we know if you're anything like I am, you'll completely forget it if you wait till the very end what your question actually was. But we'll address it at the end of the webinar. So no worries. Don't think that we we didn't catch it. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Andrew Brainer. He is the owner of um, Transmed Care, um, Long Distance Medical Transportation. Um, so the floor is yours. Thank you. And thanks for that introduction. Uh, thank you for hosting this podcast or the podcast webinar. Uh, just for everyone listening, this is my first webinar. So I am going to try to do my best and do right by you. Uh, I, again, my name is Andrew Brainerd. I'm the owner of TransMedCare. I started the business in 2015 when I saw that there was a need, a growing need for quality um, transportation for our seniors. And not just seniors, but those that are not capable of traveling your traditional ways, which is by, you know, riding in a car or on a plane, commercial plane, but more bed bound or needing additional uh, monitoring or just um, uh, just keeping them safe throughout the transport. So what we have now is we're based out of Maitland, Florida. Uh, we just opened up a satellite office in Las Vegas, Nevada. We do transport nationwide. So all 48 states. Um, just taking a look at the next slide. I want to make sure I get ahead of myself. Um, and uh, I'll just go to the next slide. So I, I just want to get into what we what we provide. Right now, we provide long distance, and that is 300 plus miles. In the state of Florida, you can get 300 plus miles from you know Miami to Tallahassee. That can be a full day's travel. So that still would be within the realm of things that we provide. But what we're really specializing in is the state to state, the long hauls, your Florida to New York, your Texas to Ohio, California to Idaho. Um, those types of trips are what we're specializing in. 
And what's great about our company is we send a three-person crew that consists of two drivers and a medical personnel. The two drivers are just going to focus on driving. They rotate back and forth. That way we can drive straight through. And then the CNA takes care of the patient. That way the drivers just focus on driving and the patient gets all the care that they need from the CNA that's on board. They're all licensed. Uh, they're able to administer medications. We are also able to provide oxygen should a patient need it. Uh, we can do suction, wound care. Um, we don't do BLS or ALS, so no life support, no ventilators, things of that nature. And then we do the basics, which is just keeping the patient comfortable, safe, checking vitals, and keeping them company. Our vans are equipped for two family members to ride with. Sometimes family members aren't available, which is why the CNA being in the back the entire time is nice, just so that the patient has someone to talk to, to ask for things when they need them. Also, with our vans being equipped uh, with the, allowing two family members, meals and drinks are included for everyone on board. We now, do have I, a Oh, sorry. So is this something that most most long distance medical transportation provides, or is this is this is clearly something that is ideal? So is this is this a standard? Uh, allowing three people to ride with is not standard. Um, long distance transportation, when you're looking for something like that for uh, one of your clients or even maybe your own fam family member is the size of the van. Uh, the people, they're gonna send, some companies send two people and some send three people, crew. Um, six inch memory foam mattress, eight inch memory foam mattress is pretty standard industry wide. Okay. Entertainment on board is uh, industry wide, uh, but you have anywhere from TV with a DVD player, um, some have Wi-Fi. We actually took it a step further and we added Netflix account, but you can sign in your own stuff if you want to throughout the trip. Mm -hmm. So those things are standard. Having a medical personnel on board is, is should be standard uh, when you're looking for a transportation company because you want to make sure that they're able to take care of the patient the way that they should. And if an emergency should arise, handle it correctly, which is what most com what all companies should be doing is either pulling over and call in an ambulance or taking them directly to the emergency room based on the CNA's assessment. Right. I feel like having the CNA is one of the most, the qualified person on board during that medical transportation is, is a really important point. I mean, that's yeah, to yeah. make sure that that person is, is primo. Yes. Um, we found the CNAs are the best because they're the ones that usually tend to work in uh, at home health care or they work with the in nursing homes, really taking care of the patient, changing the briefs, rotating the patient, helping with feeding those kind of like interpersonal bedside manner type situations. The CNAs have been the ones that really shine in that aspect. RNs are able to do the transports as well. And there are some par paramedics. Um, that are capable of doing it. We just found that the CNAs fit the slot for every, you know, every check mark of what we're looking for Definitely. For, for our crew. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, to me, I was just thinking to myself of that would be like one of the, the most important aspects because if there's a medical anything, you just want to make sure that there's somebody that is, that, you know, that can take care of all those things that's ready to. It, yeah. And, to go beyond that, you, you know, when you're talking about my company and other companies, um, even pets, you know, we have it down there. Mm -hmm. Not all companies allow pets to come on board. Uh, we definitely do that because we understand a lot of people see their pet as family. You know, I have my own dog. I see him as family. And it's a comforting factor as well. So that's why we do uh, provide that. We've, we take pets. We've taken cats, birds, snakes, <laughs> just no large animals, you know, no Great Danes. Or horses, they have to be, you know, reasonable uh, size animals. I would bet. But our CNAs are, you know, they're monitoring vitals. They're going to check the blood sugar if they're diabetic. They're going to check their O2 stats, uh, check their temperature, uh, check their heart rate. All, all of these things are being monitored throughout the trip. Uh, we don't have like a monitor on board that they're hooked up to. So it's just checking it at every stop. Again, we're not emergency, so we're taking care of patients who might be just a little bit elevated on the care they need, but not in a, an emergency situation. 
Yeah. And you mentioned one of the very first things you mentioned was 300 miles or more. That's con that is what's considered typically long distance. Yes, there, there are companies. Distance? Yes, there, there are companies that do 200 miles. Uh, a lot of some companies do 300 like we do. And then there's some that won't take a trip unless it's 500 plus miles. Okay. Uh, so that is pretty much industry wide when it comes to long distance. Now, some local companies can do long distance. What separates usually from the local companies to, you know, the long distance is the insurance aspect. The um, Florida Highway Administration requires that you have $1.5 million liability in an accident. And that's not required for local. That's required for crossing state lines. So all your long distance companies should have at least 1.5. Now we carry 2 million and we also carry 1 million from bedside to bedside. So the clients are also covered once they we step out of the hospital from the hospital door or your home or the nursing home. So we get into the van, insurance is covered. They're covered the entire way. Okay. All right. Yes. So typical conditions that require non-emergency private medical transportation. So this is gonna be your elderly uh, patients who may, ha may have dementia, may have Alzheimer's, uh, they may have sundowners. These are all conditions that can cause patients during a transport, if you're doing it yourself, where they get irritable, uh, they might even, and it does happen, but it's rare, they get physical. Uh, having a safe, secure transport with a licensed person on board is going to assist that patient with keeping them calm, helping, uh, you know, make sure they're getting their medications, and that way you're not driving and you know trying to look in the rear view mirror to make sure that mom or dad is is okay um patients experiencing chronic illnesses uh maybe just had uh hip surgery uh maybe quadriplegic we're really dealing with the patients who are bed bound um i'm not sure of all the conditions that don't allow patients to fly but we take a lot of patients who could normally fly commercial just fine, but the doctor won't allow them for whatever medical condition that they have. So they end up going with us because they can lie flat on a stretcher, six inch primary foam mattress the entire way. Um, a lot of these are industry wide as far as the, the needs of why transportation is needed. Uh, we've transported prison, uh, medical prison transfers with our vans being equipped the way that they are. We have, uh, we can have an armed escort on board as well. So everyone is safe in that aspect. If you have patients with respiratory conditions, we do have a nebulizer on board and we have oxygen on board. That is, I would say, pretty much industry standard, but there are some companies that don't, uh, but that is to be expected. Post-surgery patients, I did touch on that. Uh, it could be any surgeries. You, We also deal with patients who were on a, let's say they were here on a cruise, and something happened, or they're here in Florida, bike week, and they get into a motorcycle accident, and now they're bed bound, and they got to get back to whatever state they lived in so that they can see their primary doctor, and, and they can't stay here. We're assisting with patients of that nature. And then it's very rare, but it, it does happen. Patients who are bed bound or use a powered wheelchair, and they want to visit for, I mean, we recently did one where the lady wanted to be at her grandson's uh, wedding. So we were able to transport not only her, but we were able to take a small trailer behind on our vans because they have the tow hitch so that we could take her mechanical, uh, her uh, uh, powered wheelchair with us so that she could use it while she was at the event. So we are able to take uh, some belongings. We don't, it's not what we're really designed to do, but it does help the family member when they have maybe the powered uh, recliner or a powered wheelchair or a medical bed. You know, we wanna make sure that you're gonna get those costly things where you're going, that you have them when you get there, as opposed to having to wait for it to be delivered by someone else or having to pay out of pocket for another one in the area that you're at. So we try to go above and beyond, not only with the non-emergency, but also helping with things like that. Yeah, and you know, you and I have talked about this and I can't ever stress it enough, um, patients that have, cognitive issues, even if it's not advanced with either dementia or Alzheimer's, um, riding in a car for a long period of time or flying, anything like that, where it's 
they're looking out the window. It can cause such stress and anxiety and it can, it just really can make for just, it, it can get really bad. I mean, I experienced that and I know I've shared this story with you with my own father, um, just going not even an hour and a half from his home to my home and just the complete meltdown in the car with how, how long is it going to take? I can't, this is taking too long, getting just stressed out. Um, where I realized that in order to really go from my house to even a Publix or anything, I had to put the GPS on for him so that he could watch it so that that was to give him something to focus on um, so that he had some idea on time in a car. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced before is trying to travel with him, even just very short periods. So I can't imagine a 300 mile trip in any kind of vehicle that's not set up for, you know, like a hospital room where you can have everything you need right there and you're not really realizing what's, you know, the stress of that transportation or imagine putting him on a plane. Oh my gosh, like, I can just see we'd be kicked off one of those. He wouldn't have been mm -hmm. able to handle it. There's no way, no way. Yeah. It, and these are, you know, these are stories we hear from, from people. These are stories I hear from people like yourself when I meet them out in public and I tell them what I do. And they were like, oh, I wish I would have known this service existed. It would have just made my life so much easier. So it is a quite common. And to tie all in so much what, or what we've talked about so far. So looking for a transport company, you want to make sure that they have a medical person on board, because even if you don't know if they have sundowners or Alzheimer's and maybe they don't have it, irritability for a long distance trip is it can happen. So having someone back there that can keep them calm and make sure that they're doing okay is important. Making sure that you can ride with if you want to, to keep them comfortable, also important. Um, having, like you said, you use the GPS, having the television on board can also be a good distraction. We can also play music. Some people just want to listen to music. We have headphones, so it's just, they're just the ones listening to the music or watching the television. Uh, all of these things are incorporated with many of the companies that exist out there. I uh, just keep in mind the things that are most important. And with sending that three person crew, what we tend to do a lot of is we have, you know, it's a very difficult situation when you're going from one nursing home to the other and you're trying to get this all lined up because one nursing home has, you know, they're like, you need to leave. And the other nursing home's like, you need to be here tomorrow. We got to give the bed to someone else. So with a long distance company, any of them, Allowing to pick up the patient at the end of one day and then having them there the next day is, is very helpful when you're trying to transfer from one place to another. Uh, and having that three-person crew allows us to drive throughout the night and make things safe. All right. And safety actually is really top priority. Yes. So the joys of COVID, effects of COVID-19 and other communicable diseases on medical transportation. Prior to COVID-19, cleaning always was essential to, uh, to us. It's essential to all non-emergency, whether it's local or long distance. You have to keep the vans clean because you, you're not aware or you, don't, you might not always know everything that a patient has. Now, we do a thorough background, uh, get a report from either the family if they're coming from a home or from the nursing home hospital to know what we're transporting the patients with. During COVID-19, this became especially difficult because every state was doing something different with what they were, were allowing patients to come in or not discharging, not accepting. So it got very complicated. And during that time, um, what it allowed me to realize it was the real need for having a bathroom on board. And that's not something I touched on before. We do have vans without bathroom and ba ones with bathroom. And a lot of times, uh, and we offer price differences there too. Because some patients are incontinent. There's never a need for a bathroom for them. So why pay the extra money? But the ones that can, you know, use the bathroom, it keeps them from having to get off the van. So it limits their exposure to the outside world while we're traveling. Um, so it, it allowed us to transport people safely during the COVID-19 times. And it it did uh, just reinforce our, our cleaning after every transport. The way we are cleaning staff for the mans looks at it is, if you're renting a hotel room, a five-star hotel room, you want that thing to be clean. So that's how every trip should be, you know, one after one patient to another. Um, let's see what else. 
I really think having that bathroom on boy on board, if you're able to use the bathroom and you're not dependent on um, uh, adult undergarments, is really important regardless of it. I mean, if if you can get off, you know, you don't know if you're going to go into a gas station bathroom, you know, all those conditions are such variables when you're traveling long distances mm -hmm. to just know you have that and it's nice and clean and you don't have to worry about, you know, those gas station, McDonald's, bathrooms, what have you. Right. Um, they can really be um, iffy. Yes, of course. And when you're dealing with someone <laughs> Even, who's... yeah someone who's uh, maybe not that stable on their feet, you're adding the risk of them falling during the transport and then it turning from non-emergency to an emergency situation. Yeah. So we try to limit all of that um, yeah. to just make it as, as safe as possible. Yeah, um, so those are, those are great bullet points to make sure that you have that when you're looking into that. Um, and now toilets and bathrooms on board is not an industry standard. Uh, yeah. There are only, in my understanding there's two companies it's myself and there's another one that i know that have bathrooms on board so that is not something that's industry-wide okay types of vehicles to look for when selecting a medical transportation provider there are a handful of companies maybe two handfuls of companies that provide long distance transportation unfortunately there is only less than a handful of vehicles to use to provide these types of transportation. So you have the Dodge Ram Pro Masters, you have the Mercedes Sprinters, and you have the Ford Transit. And Nissan does have a utility vehicle as well. Um, and there are companies that use it. It is smaller. Um, that one being the smallest, the Ford Transit would be, you know, the second, uh, the Pro Masters, the third biggest, and then the uh the uh, Sprinter is the, the largest, and, it, and it's all based on certain different factors. Some of them are longer, some are wider, so that all allows for these extra amenities and things to be on board. Uh, we found that the Pro Masters, the extended versions, give us everything that we need space-wise, more, more or less the width-wise, to be able to have the things that we have. Um, you can see in the picture here, there's storage on the right. There's ability for two people to ride with there. Um, the toilet is in a hidden compartment. All the all these um, the blinds that you see there, they close off the area to create complete privacy. The curtains close. The every inch of the van has been thought out for the creating convenience and comfort. Um, now, as far as other companies and their customization, they all vary on what amenities they provide and how their layout is. There are There's a company that has where the stretchers will come in and load in the other way so that the customers are facing towards the way you're going as opposed to the rear. Uh, that's not an industry standard situation. Uh, most of them are facing to the rear and not all vans and companies have blinds. So we have blinds on board that we can close so that the sun's blasting through the back windows or you know headlights at nighttime we can close those and it's not an irritant because those bright lights even when you're trying to sleep are can be irritating to a patient in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning yeah um, those are like little things that you don't think about right yeah yeah yep. uh, we have a grab bar that's on there so that the patient can grab it while we're trying to rotate them um, we have seat belts that are not only for the passenger or the patient, but for the passenger as well. So safety is also um, essential to us. As you can see, everything's padded. God forbid an accident happened. I don't want people hitting hard surfaces. So everything is, is padded as much as could be. Uh, prices as far as our company and any company, it's all going to be based on the patient's needs and the distance that you're going and how quickly you need to go. So those are all going to be your three major factors on what the price is. If you need to go immediately, um, there are companies that can provide that, but they're going to, you know, charge more for the availability to go immediately. If you need, you know, a family member to ride with, some companies allow it, but they would charge more for it. Um, same with pets. Uh, if you, if the patient requires more care uh, beyond a CNA, they're going to charge more for the use of an RN on a transport van. Uh, so all of those things are going to be factors on the price. Um, meals, drinks, and snacks, those are that's industry. 
pretty much industry standard uh, of companies providing snacks and drinks on board and then stopping and getting food for, you know, the patient and those riding with. That's a pretty much a standard thing. TVs at this point are standard, but the type of entertainment you have on board can vary, whether it's, you know, just a stack of DVDs or if they have some kind of smart television that can hook up to Netflix that has endless entertainment. Um, even Wi-Fi is not an industry standard for the vans, uh, so you can use the internet that's on board. We do have a, um, a uh, mobile booster, which increases the signal. So even if you want to use yours, you can use it and you might have better signal in areas that you might not otherwise have had. So we just try to make it comfortable because a lot of times when family members don't want to ride with, they want to check in and we can FaceTime so that they can talk to their loved one. Uh, we can, we keep them constantly uh, updated on throughout the transport. They know when we're going to be arriving. They, they can always get a hold of the crew throughout the transport. Oh, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. I don't even know if we've even talked about that, but I like that being able to, you know, stay connected during the whole transportation via FaceTime and that kind of thing, staying connected. Um, I did have a question for you, and I, I'm sure this that you can, but I just wanted to ask this. You can do like your own bedding. Can you bring like your own bedding that, you know, like if you have a specific fault or things like that? Yes, that actually is slightly a common um, request. Uh, we have bedding for everyone on board, but patients are welcome to bring their own bedding. The way that our vans are set up and having that extra side there the stretcher lines up perfectly with the side. So it allows for you to be able to stretch out more. And actually uh, some patients who have really bad, bad um, bed sores and things of that nature, they have, you know, those inflatable uh, mattresses. Yeah. You know, we have the space to put that there for even more comfort. You know, we already have the six inch memory foam mattress and six, eight, four, those are, you know, inch mattresses is a common thing. Um, but the material isn't always, because you got to think about the bumpy roads. Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. We can, we can make the van as nice as possible, but we cannot control the roads. Exactly. Um, so that's going to be additional things when you're looking into a provider. What's going to increase the cost? Uh, things of that nature. Right. All right. How medical vehicles are staffed for long distance travel? So teams consist of one or two drivers and a licensed medical personnel. Again, uh, at least a minimum of two people is uh, industry standard, but most companies do send three people. Uh, the certification of each person, it varies by the business and what the patient might need. Drivers should be trained in defensive driving and CPR and should have received a DOT physical. So there's unfortunately um, not a regulatory body that really mandates these types of things for non-emergency transportation, especially the long distance. Um, so really it's up to every company on their safety standards. You know, the, you, you have to have $1.5 million insurance, but if you, there's no industry standard, or there's no enforcement that makes sure that you have more uh, or even that you have the 1.5. I've heard of companies that don't have that much insurance. So that's something that you can ask the insurance or your uh, the transport company you're at you're getting a quote from. Ask them to see your insurance coverage. Every company should be able to provide you an accord page that shows you how much insurance they have. Um, and as far as CPR, DOT, and defensive driving, again, it's not an industry standard, but it is something that we enforce because we want to provide as much as safest transports as possible. If you're not doing the DOT physicals, you don't know if someone has to wear glasses or not. If they can't see at nighttime when they drive, that causes issues. Um, CPR, our CNAs are already trained in CPR, but the drivers can then assist with the, the CNA if, if CPR is ever needed. Um, if the trip is longer than 10 hours, you should consider a three-person crew. And this is true, because you gotta think, break that down, that's two five hours. And then if you only have a two-person crew, once the driver's done driving, then now they're taking care of the patient. So they're not really getting the downtime. And the way I look at it is any trip that's overnight should have three people, regardless of the, the distance, because you your trip might be, let's say your trip's four hours. That crew still had to have come from somewhere. So they were still driving prior to your trip. They're still going to be driving after your trip. 
So if you have a two-person crew, fatigue can really set in. So it's best to have a three-person crew. And then the medical per professional may include, you know, the CNA, LPN, RN, and par paramedic. Uh, license, uh, the LPN isn't always necessary. Again, that's going to be more elevated patient care, which tends to not ever go with non-emergency. Uh, the same with RNs. It's not really a requirement. And again, not there's no mandate on that. So this is all things that are self-regulated with every company. So there's no regulation on how many people have to be driving for how many hours? Is there's no regulations? No, not for that. The way that the vans are, all the vans and all the industry, they don't meet a weight requirement. So you don't have to have a DOT number. And because we're not transporting more than seven people, then you don't have to have a DOT number. So it, it falls under this different category, but then isn't really you know, regulated the way that it should. So every company is responsible for their own, their own safety, their own, you know, rules to how they provide transportation, um, you know, how they refund you if there's a problem, how they handle your situation should, you know, a death occurred before you transport, during the transport, you know, all of that is just industry. It's not mandated, basically. Okay. Um, so summary of long distance medical transportation services. To provide a safe and secure transport, transportation option for elderly patients and individuals with special medical needs. So that is the ultimate goal. We want the family whose loved one we're transporting to feel comfortable, safe, and secure, and know that they're dealing with a reputable company. Uh, something that a lot of people don't think of, think about is the fact that we are based out of Maitland. But our clients don't come to us. They don't come to us and see who we are as a company and, and make a decision based on coming into our office. They're, they're spending you know, lots of money on, on something that they never see the company. And they hope that you're going to be there on, on the day you're supposed to pick up. You know, so it's, it's very nerve-wracking. Uh, so definitely want to do your research with companies. Social media uh, is always a good way to see who is reputable, and, uh, you know, who's maybe not doing such a great job. Right. Um, say, safest method of travel for individuals requiring medical supervision and advanced comfort care. So that is what we're trying to provide out there. Uh, you know, air is faster, but it's usually double the cost of ground, unless you're talking commercial. Um, but then you're around a bunch of other passengers on a plane and you 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 spoke about that earlier, right? Um, then if, if and then if you're paying for multiple people and maybe a pet, something like that, it may not. I mean, I don't know what the difference would be, but it may not be significantly more. Correct. Uh, and with the the way our vans are designed, sometimes it's husband and wife who were transporting, and both of them one more advanced in their medical needs, and the other one not so much. But we're able to take care of both patients throughout the transport with our vans being designed the way that they are. Right. which is not something that's common. Um, all details of travel and medical care are handled by a professional medical transport provider. So yes, uh, CNA for us, uh, we do keep a, a daily log and a medical log that is provided by uh, our company at the end of the trip. You get a copy of that. So you see that the, the CNA on board actually was feeding the patient because we get a lot of times patient doesn't want to eat, but we're still showing that we bought them food and even if they didn't eat it, because we don't want you to feel like your loved one was with us the whole time and we didn't feed them because they didn't choose to eat. So we buy food regardless if they eat it or not. Right. Um, and all that comes in the logging in of the medical log to ensure, you know, we keep records that show what we did and that they got all the care that they were supposed to get. Right. Uh, medicine and comfort care is administered by licensed medical professional. Yes. Um, that would be your RN, CNAs, things of that nature. Uh, fully coordinated, supervised medical transportation, bedside to bedside. That is, I would say, industry-wide. I, I know that local trips, they might not do bedside to bedside, but I'm pretty sure every company that does uh, long distance provides bedside to bedside. And that would be the priority. I mean, clearly you don't want to have to keep moving from here to there. It goes bedside to bedside. It's just. Yes. 
Yeah, because it's, it's a complete transportation. <laughs> I I would be upset if I paid the money and, and I didn't I got dropped off at the front door instead of getting all the way to my bed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, perfect. Well, we have quite a few questions. Um, are you ready for some questions? Yeah, I just go to the oh, what did I do? I think that was the last page. Uh, I messed it up. That's okay. Um, well, I did, let me just throw this question at you while you look at that. Um, one of the questions was, and I know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer it. Um, is this service provided nationwide? Yes, nationwide. We go all 48 states. So they haven't created a bridge yet to Hawaii, but once they do, we'll go to Hawaii too. Uh, we, we also don't go to Alaska just because of the cost of traveling through Canada. Um, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. But yes, all lower 48 states, that isn't industry-wide. Some companies specialize in only the East Coast, uh, but you can find companies on the West Coast that uh, don't exist on the East Coast. So there is a long distance company somewhere in the United States that can go take you somewhere, anywhere. So can you give an example on pricing? I'm sure there's a, a variety of what pricing would look like throughout the industry. And my question is, does, it, does the pricing matter if you're coming from one part of the country to the other versus leaving, like if you were maybe leaving from Alabama and you were going to Indiana versus from Florida to New, I mean, does it matter where your destinations are? If it's like a higher cost of living area from a lower cost, does any of that matter? I do have that question. That's one of my questions. Um, so just a, an example of a price, Florida to New York is going to cost roughly about $7,500. Okay. Our minimum charge is 5,000. And then it goes up from there. Again, okay. it's based on mileage, patient care. And yes, the, the trips that are on the West coast are, are more expensive because the costs over there are more expensive. Yes. Yeah. Cause I would imagine, you know, all these different types of things. And sometimes doing business in one state is significantly more than doing business in another state. So your taxes might be higher, cost of gas is gonna be higher. All those things are gonna be taken into account. So just yeah, getting- Hotels, fuel, yeah. everything is more expensive on the West Coast. So yes, they are, Absolutely. they tend to run more expensive. Absolutely. Um, so there's a question on how much do you pay the CNA? I would assume that that varies. I don't know if it- uh, it does vary by business, uh, but for us personally, we pay two hundred and sixty a day, which is a twenty-four hour block, and then we pay forty dollars for per diem. So it's you're making rough, you're making three hundred dollars a day. Oh, that's nice. And our drivers are making, um, we we pay them, we pay the regular drivers uh, what two hundred and ten a day, and again the forty dollar per diem, and then we have crew leaders who are the ones that. They don't do the CNA work, but they know what everyone should be doing, and they get paid two hundred and sixty a day, and the forty dollars per diem. So we we pay our contractors, um, you know, a higher price to ensure that they're happy. Because if they're not happy, they're not making the customers happy. So it's important to keep them happy. Right. Um, pay is it private pay, or do you accept any types of insurance? Yes, I should have got to that during the slideshow. It is private pay, and that is industry standard for long distance non emergency. Because uh, it's it's mostly considered a luxury type service. Some insurances will reimburse if it if you're going to perhaps an area where the care where you currently live doesn't provide the care that you need and you have to travel a longer distance to get somewhere. Insurance companies will reimburse for that, but it's always done on the back end. Okay. Um, can you? One of the other questions was: Can you administer feeding uh, tube feedings? We don't provide um, continuous tube feeding because the patient can aspirate. What we provide is bolus feeding so that either one of two things happens. The, the doctor says this isn't that far of a trip. We're just going to discontinue the feeding for the duration of the trip. Or we just do the bolus feeding and we go ahead and stop, you know, when we need to, to do the, the bolus feeding. Okay, good. That was a good question. Yes, um, very good question. So the other question is, CNAs in Florida um, cannot administer meds. So how do you get around that? Uh, so CNAs get the certification for administering medications, and we are co continuing the care that was provided or the instructions that were given to us by a doctor. 
So we're just continuing the care that the doctor gave. We're, we're, when it comes to the care, we're kind of like a home assisted, you know, you go in and you help a patient with their meds, you help them with bathing, uh, changing them, things of that nature. So that's how we're able to administer medications throughout. We do not prescribe any medications. So even if a customer asks for Tylenol, if it's not on the list of doctor prescribed medications, they don't receive them. Okay. Um, good question too, right? Yes. Um, so I have um, another one. Does uh, Do you conduct transportation sat satisfaction surveys? Um, we don't. Uh, we just encourage them to leave a review. Okay. Um, and that is all that I have so far. Um, if anyone else has any more questions, that's it. Yeah. And, and to touch on the reason why we don't, once we're done with the transport, because we deal with so many end of the stage life patients, the last thing we want to do is keep sending them emails or surveys or stuff, you know, and mom or dad just passed away like the next day. Yeah. We want to, you know, once they are done with the service, we, we thank them, you know, we, we do that and we want to just let them have their, you know, deal with their family in whatever way they're having to at that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that that is, oh, wait a minute. Great point. That's the, the comment on that. Um, uh, all right. Yes. So that's all that I have um, in q and If anyone else has a QA and a uh, or a question, go ahead and put it in there real quick as we get it, we're getting ready to sign off. Otherwise, um, if you think of something and you have another question, um, I'm going to be, like, just like I said in the very beginning, we're going to be sending out the link to the uh, video that we just recorded with all of Andrew's contact information. You're welcome to reach out to him directly um, or to his team um, if you have any additional questions. And also, um, please go ahead and visit his website. And you can also reach out to me if you have any questions on seniorlivingguide.com. And thank you so much for joining us, Andrew. Yes, thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, again, you guys are here. You're helping the seniors make the best decisions possible and trying to provide them resources that are necessary. So if you ever have just general questions, um, feel free to reach out. I Back when I was doing the sales and I instill this in all my sales uh, team members, we've actually helped give advice on how to transport a loved one themselves because it paying for the service was too much and they wanted to get it done. And we, if they're not going to use our service or any other service, we at least want to try to give them the best advice possible yeah. to do it on their own. Yeah, I really appreciate that as well. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, we've really enjoyed working with you. Thank you. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it too. It's just new relationship, but it's growing. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, Katie, I see where you said email me at, and I've got your email address and I am copy and pasting this and I'm grabbing it. So don't you worry. All right. I think that that's it. All right. Thank you guys. I hope I was not too bad for my first webinar. No, it was fabulous. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Everyone have a great day. Yes. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.